guys, in this video we're going to be looking at instrumental methods, specifically gas chromatography analysis and mass spectrometry, and we'll finish off with a summary. If you've watched our videos on chromatography and the tests for gases, cations and anions, you'll know that there's many different ways that we can find out the identity of a product in the lab. However, we can also use machines in order to carry out analysis of our substance. And this is known as an instrumental method of analysis. Instrumental methods have many advantages over simple flame tests or precipitation reactions, for example. Firstly, sensitivity. Machines can analyse very small amounts of substances, which is helpful if we get a lot less product in our reaction than we hoped for. Secondly, machines are very accurate, and using a machine removes human error. Thirdly, machines are very quick and may be able to run multiple samples at the same time. Two examples of instrumental analysis are gas chromatography and mass spectrometry, and we're going to look at each of these in a bit more detail. The setup for the gas chromatography experiment is explained in another video. So here, we're just going to look at the results that you get from a gas chromatography experiment, which is called a chromatogram. A chromatogram looks like this. On the x-axis, you have the time in minutes, representing the time it took a substance to travel through the gas chromatography experiment, which is known as the retention time. And on the right-hand side, or y-axis, you have the strength of the response from the machine. In the chromatogram, each individual peak represents a separate component within the mixture. And you can therefore see that the mixture that was separated in order to produce this chromatogram contained one, two, three, four, five, six separate components. The chromatogram is additionally useful because the area under the peak in each case indicates the relative amount of each component that was present in the mixture. It is important to compare the areas and not just the heights because the widths of the peak may be different. Still, in this example, you can clearly see that this component was present in the highest amount in the mixture and that this component was present in the lowest quantity in the mixture. The gas chromatography experiment relies on the fact that the retention time which is the time taken for a substance to travel through the column, is different for different substances. And this is why you see peaks at different points along this x-axis. The retention time will be related to the interaction of each substance with the mobile phase and the stationary phase in the gas chromatography experiment. And this can be used to indicate the likely nature of that substance, which is explained in more detail in the video on gas chromatography. Hi guys! To continue watching this video and in lock, hundreds of other super concise and exam board specific GCC chemistry and combined science videos. Just click on the Snap Revised smiley face. Join me today and together let's make chemistry at GCSE a walk in the park.